Hi, and welcome to the third video in this series. Again, my name is Brandy Horn. Again, I'm an instructional reference librarian at the Grant Graniteville Library. Um, and now we are on to searching. We uh, kind of explored the website a little bit to see what was available to you and the ways that you could get help. And then we talked about your assignment and we talked about the worksheet that I provided for you um, and how that is crafted to help you with your research. And presumably you've gone through the worksheet by this point. And so now we are going to take what we have come up with and we're going to look for some information. We're going to look for sources. Um, so one of the other videos that I will make available to you is not one that I've created, but it's one that one of my colleagues created, uh, Deborah Harmon, uh, that will give an overview of how to use the library's catalog. Um, so you can listen to someone else's voice for a change. Um, but I will send that along with these. That is a more general overview, but it's, you know, very thorough and there's no point in redoing it again. So I will send that video along with these. Um, but when you first come onto the library's homepage, again, the default tab is the books and more, and that is the library's catalog. And you can search for books, eBooks, but also articles. And that, um, that video that I will send along uh, will be what you use to um, figure that out or to learn how to use the catalog. Again, as I said, the databases tab gives you an alphabetical listing of all 300 plus databases that we have access to. And if you know exactly which ones that would be useful to you, you can find them in this list. But if you don't know, you can always click on the research guides tab and refer to our research guides. If your topic is more business related, you can go to the business guide. If your topic has to do with education, we have an education guide and so on. Following the example that we used on the worksheet, uh, the example provided by your professor dealing with oncology nurses or um, nurses being the most important part of the patient's treatment regimen or yeah, patient's treatment regimen. Um, I'm going to go down to the nursing research guide and I'm going to click go. So that takes me into the nursing research guide and we have several tabs across the top and I want to focus on finding articles right now. So I'm going to click the find articles tab. And then I have a list of the databases that would be appropriate to use um, for nursing research. Um, I mentioned earlier that CINAHL is kind of the primary nursing database that we have access to. But if you look through the list, we have CINAHL. Um, and some things that may be familiar to you, if you've ever used JSTOR before, that's available to you. Um, I mentioned Science Direct on the worksheet, that's available here. And oddly enough, I don't see Academic Search Premier, which is fine. We could still get to it if we wanted to. Um, but we do have CINAHL complete, so I'm going to click that. And hey, it looks just like Academic Search Premier, doesn't it? Um, if you wanted to search CINAHL and Academic Search Premier at the same time, you could. Up here where it says Choose Databases. This is an alphabetical listing of all of the EBSCO databases that we have access to, um, right? So we have several. Um, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and select Academic Search Premier as well so that you're searching both that and CINAHL at the same time, right? Now we're searching two different databases. Now remember, we had our um, worksheet where we did different search terms and we combined different search terms to see what kinds of things we would get, right? So the first combination of search terms that I had on there was nurse and chemotherapy, but notice these different autocomplete options. You can always pay attention to those and write anything down that looks like it could potentially be useful, right? Um, chemotherapy or chemo or cancer treatment, right? That might be something to pay attention to, that there are those different synonyms, those different ideas for, or those different ways for expressing those, that same idea. But I'm just gonna stick with nursing chemotherapy for right now. <laughs> Okay, so we get nearly 6,000 articles, right? So just using this as a starting point to show you some limiters, 
on the left hand side um, we see that we can limit to and it gives us a bunch of options as we scroll through our results list right we see that we have a ton of stuff everything that says academic journal is peer-reviewed and everything so far is peer-reviewed but if we want to be sure on the left we can limit to scholarly peer-reviewed and that takes everything out that's not and still we have 5500 results now uh, you're not allowed to go back any further than 1990, so we have this date slider. We can drag it up, and that takes us to just under 54, so it doesn't bring it down, us down a whole lot. Now, we also have this option to limit to full text. I would not necessarily use that unless you just have a ton of sources um, and or we see these, these items that have the find it button. If it has a PDF full text or HTML full text, then the full text of the article is available in this database. But if it has a find it button, then that means that the item is not available in full text in this database. But if you click that button, it will tell you whether or not it is full text in another database. So you don't necessarily need to limit your sources to full text because especially depending on the, the type of thing that you're researching, there may not be a lot of information. So I would not limit to full text unless you just absolutely had to. Now, this article that we looked at, excuse me, right, was not full text in this database. So I clicked find it and it shows me that it's available in both of these places. So I can click academic one file and wait for it to load. But usually when you click on the link, it'll take you directly to the article that you're looking for. And in Academic One file, the articles tend to be full text in the item record. So we have what we call HTML full text right here, right? including all the references at the end. Okay. And you can always download it from this point save it to your Google Drive, save it to your cloud or whatever. Yeah. Um, but you have access to the article just in a different database, right? Oh, you can send across the top. It says send to. Um, so we'll close that. So I would not limit to full text unless you just absolutely had to. Now, let's just say that you decided that you absolutely had to. So you can limit to full text. And now we're down to 2,500. So basically cut our results in half. Okay. Now nurse and chemotherapy is bringing back a ton of stuff, right? We kind of want to be more specific. Um, so there are a couple options. On the left-hand side, we have subject the source term and subject major heading. So if we were going through this list and not really seeing like kind of what we were looking for, um, we could come over to the left and look at subject the source term and subject major heading. So if we click on subject the source term and open it up, we get a bunch of different keywords or subject terms that are applied to the items in this results list, right? And so if you wanted to be more specific, if you wanted to target um, uh, specific concepts or ideas, or maybe you weren't sure what other keywords to use, like you went through the worksheet and you didn't come up with anything else, uh, this database wants to help you as much as possible. And so if you use these tools like the subject, the source term, um, it will help you generate that kind of language. So if you hadn't already thought of oncology nurse, there it is. If you hadn't thought of drug therapy, there it is. Um, cancer patients is a term, cancer treatment, therapeutics, um, types of treatment, right? Patient education. If we hadn't already, um, we came up with patient satisfaction, uh, and I think we pay, came up with patient education under related terms. But if we hadn't already, it's right there. Okay, quality of life, occupational roles, uh, medical care, nurse patient relationships, right? There are all these things here that allow us to target more specific information. So again, if we had not thought of any search terms already, this would be a good place to look to see what's there, right? And then along the same lines, you can do subject major, head, major heading. 
Um, there's generally a different kind of quality to these, um, you know, but they're still here. If you're talking about uh, an oncology nurse being the most important part of a cancer patient's reg or, you know, can or treatment regimen, you might look at quality of life, maybe nurse role. You can select one thing or multiple things, right? And then update. And we go from over 2,000 results to 78, okay? Some of it's not in English, but you know, you can skip over those, right? So using this left-hand side to limit to full text, to limit to peer review, to limit by date, to limit by subject major heading or subject to source term is very, very helpful, can be very helpful to you in um, targeting specific information that might be useful. Okay, so let's say I do a new search. Oncology nurse and patient satisfaction. Again, I could pay attention to my autocomplete. <clears throat> I know immediately since I'm limited to these types of things, I want to limit to peer reviewed. Uh, the date slider goes back to 1989. I'm not going to worry about it. I can go back to 1990. Um, one extra year is not going to be the end of the world as far as like my results list. Um, if I wanted to limit more, uh, more specifically, first of all, I would pay attention to this phrase nurse navigators. Um, I don't know what that is. So I'd probably write that down and see what that was all about. Cause that might be something that would be relevant or useful to me. But I can go down here to subject the source term or subject major heading, either one, and see what kinds of things are available. Maybe I want to limit to patient satisfaction. Maybe I want to look at that um, also with nurse patient relations. Okay. And I could scroll through and add anything else I wanted. But I click update and I go from 300 something results to 41. 41 is a manageable number of results. And in fact, I think anything from like 50 to 75 and down is a manageable number of results. Even if you get up to 100, I would go through 100 results and see what's there. And then move on. Once I've exhausted that, I would move on to my next search. Okay. Now, as you go through and you do these different search terms and you look for, you know, you try different combinations, if you come across something that looks like it could be useful to you, right? You look at the title and you think, oh, that title looks good. Um, this one's not full text in this database, so we can click find it. Right, and we see that this is full text in another database and we can click on that. And again, generally it will take us straight to the article. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes we have to navigate a little further. Um, but in this case, it does take us to the article, okay? Now, when you're doing research in the databases, I do not recommend reading every article as you come upon it. Uh, what I recommend instead is if you look at the title, the title looks good, then you read the abstract, which is gonna be a summary or overview of the main points of the article. If the abstract looks good, and then I recommend that you email it to yourself, right? And in this database, you can email the article text, right? You have a PDF up here. You can download it and save it and do whatever you want. Maybe you email it to yourself as an attachment that way. Um, but title looks good, abstract looks good, email it to yourself. Create a folder in your Outlook and anything you send to yourself from a database, move everything to that folder um, so that you have everything that you find in a central location that you can access from anywhere. And if you're working from a database that will attach the article to the email, like it looks like this one will, and all the EBSCO databases will, um, then you have access to the full text of the articles wherever you are, okay? So this does a couple things. First of all, it pulls all your research together in a location where you can find it. Students often, I don't know why, but they think as they're searching, they come across the perfect article and they think, oh, I'll remember that and I'll come back to that. And then they can never remember it again. They can't remember what the title was, who the author was. They can't remember what search terms they used. They can't remember where they found it. Um, so if you find it and it looks useful, 
go ahead and email it to yourself so that you have it later. Um, but the other thing is, the reason I say don't try to read the article right now is because if you try to read every article you come across, it's going to make this part of the process drag on unnecessarily, right? You don't need to try to read through every article right then and there. Again, title looks good, abstract looks good, send it to yourself. If you need to find five or eight articles, find 12 to 15, right? Go through all of your different search term combinations send yourself everything that looks like it could be useful and then once you've exhausted all that then you can go to your email in the folder where you have it all and systematically work through and then you can begin reading articles or at least skimming them to get an idea if they're covering the information that you need them to cover and if they're covering it in a way that's useful to you um, because you will find as you start going through these that maybe some articles are more useful than others or some just aren't useful at all Right, and so if you need to have eight and you only found eight and then three of them didn't work, now you need to go back and find three more, right? But if you needed to have eight and you sent yourself 12, then you're good to go, okay? Um, so again, we got to this article in the Ovid database because it was not full text in the CINAHL database, right? So you don't have to limit to full text. This full text finder button will take you out and show you where it is available elsewhere if you need it. Now, I showed you how to email from that specific database. Um, let's say this is what we were interested in, this article. This is a full text PDF. You can click on it, you could download it, you could save it, you could do whatever you want, print it, right? But on the right-hand side under tools, right? We are back in the CINAHL database. We have an email button. You can enter your email address. I usually copy and paste the title of the article into the subject line. The PDF will be attached to the email that you send yourself from here. And ta-da, that's very handy, okay? Um, something else I wanna show you though under tools is the site button. People get excited about the site button. But, I want, but what I want to emphasize here is that um, machine-generated citations or computer-generated citations are always wrong in some way, right? There's always some sort of error. So you can use these tools. It's fine. Um, they do make the process easier, but they only make it easier if you understand the citation style that you are working with so that you can pick out the errors and fix them because it's ultimately your responsibility to produce a correct citation. Um, and you cannot rely on just saying, oh, but that's what the database gave me. No, because I'm warning you now that they're wrong. Um, this citation has, um, and all of the citations in the EBSCO databases have one very specific error that drives us nuts. And then there's another thing here that's not necessarily an error, but it kind of is. Um, the error that drives us all nuts is this. In MLA citation style, you include the name of the database that you're using. And in this case, they are saying that the name of the database is EBSCOhost. The name of your database is never EBSCOhost. I cannot emphasize that enough. EBSCOhost is the vendor that we buy the databases from. But as I pointed out earlier, under choose databases, all of these are EBSCO databases. So if all you write is EBSCOhost, then we don't know which one you used, okay? So that's very important. EBSCOhost is never your database name. In this case, remember we're searching across two databases at once. We're searching CINAHL and we're searching Academic Search Premier. So we don't necessarily know which database this article came from, right? But we can scroll down to the bottom and it tells us that we are in this article came from CINAHL Complete. Okay, so even though we're searching across two databases, this is telling us that we are getting this article from CINAHL. See, functionally, EBSCO understands that EBSCO is not a database, that CINAHL and Academic Search Premier are actually database names. Now, the other thing to pay attention here with this is that it provides a URL at the end of the citation. So in MLA, you have a couple of options um, for your second location is to either um, provide a DOI, which is a digital object identifier. That is the preferred 
um, information. What that number is, is something that can act as a stable or permanent URL um, so that if you put a stem, like an HTTP stem on the front of it, um, it will act as a URL and take you directly to the item. Um, but if you just Google the number, then it will show up in the results list and then you click on it, right? Um, so in, for the purposes of what we're doing here with the MLA citation, it gives us a URL, but that URL is not actually going to be useful to you or your professor. You want something that, that preferably he can click on if he wants to follow up with you or if he wants to follow up on your sources. This URL, if you were to type this in or click on this, it would not bring us back to this article. It would be a dead link, right? Same thing with this URL at the very top of the screen in your search bar, right? Or your address bar. That is not going to work to get you back to this page. The thing that you can use, though, is this permalink button at the bottom on the right. A box pops up here. And then we see HTTP, Easy Proxy, USCA, right? And the Easy Proxy is what's important here, is what will happen, whoever clicks on the link that you provide, it will take them to the login page so that they can access our databases. If the person that you send it to does not have credentials, they're not gonna be able to get in, okay? But um, MLA for the second location requires a DOI or a stable URL. And when you're in the EBSCO databases, the permalink button on the right hand side under tools is how you get that stable URL, right? So you're either looking for a DOI, which would be located down here somewhere, right? You're also looking for the database name if you're searching multiple databases at once. But then again, on the right hand side, um, under permalink, that is how you get the stable URL to get you back to this page. Okay, um, but you just go through and anything that looks like it could potentially be helpful, look at the title, look at the abstract, email it to yourself, move on to the next thing. Go through this entire results list and then move on to your next search combination, right? We also have like nurse role and we have these auto prevent options. Nurse role, let's see, chemotherapy, and pay, pay uh, treatment. Let's try treatment. So we have 440 results. Again, we can limit according to date. It's already limited to peer reviewed. If we wanted to limit to full text, we could do that. We can use subject the source term, subject major heading to focus on more specific types of information. Okay. Um, hopefully you feel pretty comfortable with de this database. If you know how to use Academic Search Premier, you can use this. If you know how to use this, you then you can use Academic Search Premier. It's a pretty straightforward database. And it's like I said, it's very user friendly. Okay. So we're going to move on. We're going to move away from the EBSCO databases. Oh, I will just say that this is an example of a DOI. Right. Um, so we're going to move away from the EBSCO databases. We're going to go back to our database list and I'm going to look at Science Direct. OK, this has a completely different interface. All right. Um, and it gives you multiple search boxes, but each one of these has a purpose, keywords, author name, uh, publication title, those kinds of things. Um, and when I click advanced search, it just takes me to kind of the same things, only rearranged. Um, but it does give me more room to work with. So if you're searching concepts that are short phrases, so multiple words and a phrase and not just one word, you'll want to put quotation marks around it. Okay, so that it searches that as a phrase. Now I'm interested in combining search terms here. So I'm going to do oncology nurse and, right? I'm going to type that in all caps. And I'm going to do patient satisfaction, right? Remember I said in the, in the EBSCO databases that each search box is one concept. And when you type in like 
you know, you fill in multiple boxes, you're telling the database that you want articles that contain this idea and this idea and this idea, right? We're doing the same thing here, only we're having to write it out ourselves, right? Whereas the other database does it automatically. Here, we're just writing in the word and, right? Um, so I'm doing oncology, nurse, and patient satisfaction. I put quotation marks around them so that it will search those ideas as phrases and not just oncology and nurse and patient and satisfaction. So I'm gonna click search and I get 488 results. Um, you can limit by date, but the farthest back it goes is 1996. So unless you are limiting yourself like to the last five or 10 years, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, other information on the left-hand side, again, we have this, this left-hand side as, as a limiter, but it's less helpful than in the EBSCO databases because you don't have all the options, right? But um, one thing that you could think about is review articles versus research articles, okay? Research articles are gonna have like um, an introduction, a literature review, a method section, it's gonna have like um, results, it's gonna have discussion, it's gonna be, um, uh, it's gonna be a full uh, study in an article, right? So when you're looking at research articles, that's what you're doing. You're looking at original research conducted by the author. And like I said, it's gonna have those kinds of headings, right? Uh, methodology and findings or results and discussion and all that. Um, so basically they're presenting the results of their research. When we talk about review articles, uh, these can take a couple different forms. They could be very short articles that review um, one particular research article. So maybe you have like a 30, 40, 50 page research article, and then like a five page review article that kind of summarizes that research. So that's one kind of review article. Another review article is a literature review, right? And what you get with a literature review is um, basically someone going through the existing literature on a topic or on a subject, and maybe they're limiting it to like the last year or last five years or something like that. And they're identifying all the primary research conducted within that time frame, and they're weaving it together into a literature review, okay? Again, it's a literal review of the literature, review of the existing literature. Um, uh, you can use that to direct you to other articles, but you would not use a literature review as a source necessarily. You would instead track down the articles that they're talking about, <clears throat> um, because otherwise you're just quoting somebody else who's quoting somebody else, and that's not ideal. So if you come across a literature review and you're finding lots of cool stuff in there that would be useful to you, don't use the literature review as a source. Go to the references pages at the, to the references pages at the end and figure out what sources they're citing and then um, and then go to those directly. OK. And they make it easy to do that in in databases in like Science Direct. So let's say we come across something that looks like it's exactly what we want. Not that this necessarily is, but I just clicked on something. And you can see on the left, the different section headings, methods, results, discussion, conclusions, right? So we know that we're looking at a study. We can look at their references. Um, and if we wanted to see where they were getting their information from, we could follow up. And if it's available in this database, it'll link you to it. And if it's full text in this database, it'll provide it. OK, so databases like this make it easy for you to kind of navigate or swim around and find more information related uh, to your topic. Other things that can help you find more articles on the right hand side, you have recommended articles. You can see if any of those are useful. You have citing articles. These are articles that cite this one in their references pages and see if anything is useful there. OK, so there are lots of different things that it's doing to kind of help you um, find more information. Excuse me. All right. So using Science Direct, again, we have a different interface than what we saw with CINAHL. Um, and it, it's not really that much, it's not really that much more complicated, but if you're not familiar with Boolean searching, um, then perhaps it is, but you just have to combine the search terms on your own. Uh, in order to get 
information that you're looking for. Um, but anyway, you scroll through, you find things that look like they could be useful. Again, we've got almost 500 results. So if I wanted to limit it further, um, maybe I wanted to look at patient satisfaction, um, uh, maybe uh, patient education. And that brings me down to 147 results, which isn't bad, okay? Um, but again, you keep combining search terms so you get manageable results lists, okay? Role of, ra uh, role of the radiation oncology nurse, that's a little bit more specific, right? Um, but you just go through and you see what kinds of things you're getting. We have something indicating um, a review article versus research article. So they're basically tell they're telling you what they are um, on the results list. All right. So Science Direct, again, a useful database, well, well, useful in the context, at least of this topic, um, has a ton of stuff and fairly easy to navigate. And you have, you can download articles from Science Direct, but you cannot consistently email from here. Um, sometimes there's the option, sometimes there's not. Uh, what I recommend is that you download the PDF and you send it to yourself as uh, an attachment so that you can still have access to it from your email, which is a central location that you can get to from anywhere. Okay. Um, but yeah, Science Direct is a good database. And just to show you the grumpy old man that I mentioned earlier, we're going to look at JSTOR. JSTOR, as I said, starts you off with a single search box but you can always click advanced search and that will take you to multiple search boxes and you can add more if you need to. Um, this database, even though you do have uh, search boxes, it is still a good idea to put quotation marks around the concepts that you're working with. Um, although they are improving. Um, but used to be even if you typed them into the same box to imply that they were a single concept, it would just find the word separately and it was very annoying. But put quotation marks around it. I also recommend that you limit to articles. If you say reviews, it's gonna be like book reviews and things like that in this context. And you can limit it to English because it is an international database. So I've typed in oncology nurse, I've typed in patient satisfaction. Um, I'm going to submit search. Oh, and I have eight results there. Um, so that's actually not a bad number. I can go through eight results. Um, but you go through, see what kinds of things you find. Uh, JSTOR is all peer reviewed, so you do not have the option to limit to peer reviewed. And also everything that you're gonna access from this database is going to be um, full text, right? It's, cause it's limited to just content that you can access, right? So you don't have to worry about any of those limiters. Um, you would not really use subject in this context because um, it's not limiting in the same way that we're limiting in those areas. So I would not worry about using, I would not worry about using, um, uh, I would not worry about using that. So oncology nurse. Let me just do that by itself. I'm going to limit to articles. I'm going to limit to English and submit. Now, if you do a search and you start off broad, um, uh, if you start off broad, you have the option of going back and forth, or you have a couple different options. You can type in just like oncology nurse. And then if you want to add search terms to it, you can come over here to the right and click modify and it takes you back to the search boxes, right? Another option that you have available to you is on the left-hand side, it says search within results. Um, right, and let's say I type in patient education. So it's gonna look for that phrase in the results list that I had, and it's bringing me back 19 results. 
right? That focus on that. Now, if I came across something that looked like it would be um, exactly the kind of thing that I wanted, right? I could click on the title. And while we do have the full text here on the right and you can click in this bar and it's like it's flipping pages, that's tedious and not the most efficient way to go about this. Um, you do have a PDF up here that you can click on it and download it and save it and do whatever you want with it. Um, but notice JSTOR does have a share button and sometimes it allows the email and sometimes it does not. Um, and the email function, the way it's been lately, has not been very good. So what I do instead is I open an email to myself in my Outlook. And in the body of the email, I copy and paste this all the way down through the stable URL. Right? I would copy that and paste that into the body of my email. Um, so I have the stable URL. Hopefully that will get me back. Um, and if it doesn't, I'll need a proxy or whatever. But if it doesn't, you have the information for the journal, for the article in the journal, so that you can always come back and find it pretty easily. But I would copy and paste all this into the email and leave the email up until I go through all my different searches and I've exhausted all my different searches and sent myself everything that I could possibly need from this database, right? So again, I would just on the left-hand side, just copy all this all the way down to the stable URL, click copy, paste it into the email myself, leave the email up, and then keep pasting stuff in it till I was done searching. And then I would send the email to myself and move it into that folder. Okay. So we have JSTOR that's available to you as well. Um, this topic that I'm dealing with is nursing. So obviously Science Direct is good for that. JSTOR is uh, largely humanities and I think social sciences. So depending on what your topic is, um, you may end up doing a lot of work in JSTOR. Uh, English majors and history majors, this is kind of like, this is kind of our thing, right? So I, uh, although I refer to it as a grumpy old man, I very much have fondness for JSTOR. Um, uh, so, I've showed you three, I've shown you three different databases that have, or technically four if you count Academic Search Premier with Sinal, that all have very different interfaces. Um, and we got glimpses of a couple others, right? So just to give you an idea that there are several different ways to interact or engage with these databases once you start searching, all right? And you're not sure what you're, you can't really know what you're gonna encounter until you're actually there and in it. Um, but a lot of the same, fun a lot of the, the functionality is basically the same, um, you know, just kind of look for those opportunities. And anytime you have a single search box, always click advanced search to try to get to the multiple search boxes so that you can combine search terms and target the specific information that you need um, for your assignment. But by all means, explore all the databases that you have available to you in the different subject areas. And there's no shame in starting with Academic Search Premier. I do it all the time. Um, but yeah, if you run into any problems or if you um, are having trouble finding information or anything like that, or you just can't log in from off campus, um, by all means, reach out to us. Uh, any of the librarians can help you with this. And um, we're more than happy to help. That's why that's why we get paid. So. Um, I think this is the end of the videos that I'm going to make for you. You have the first video, which is an introduction to the website. The second video, which talks about your assignment and the worksheet. And this one, which talks about searching. Um, again, reach out to us if you have questions. Uh, good luck and happy searching.